Uh, welcome to Ridge uh, Managed Kubernetes demo. Uh, I'm Nir, I'm uh, Ridge's uh, CTO. What we'll cover on this demo is uh, creating a cluster, deploying an application on a cluster, and show you uh, how easy it is to deploy any um, certified Kubernetes application on Ridge uh, anywhere in the world. Uh, so before we start, uh, just a reminder, uh, you could see here, uh, those are public data center providers, MSPs, uh, great, amazing data centers, each um, uh, an MSP, a provider, uh, original provider, as you could see, uh, we provide you with uh, transparency to the uh, data center, obviously the location, and the partner itself in this example this is in indonesia this is business uh, gao and certifications hardware pricing and so on um, we you can deploy um, kubernetes clusters like any other services that we have on public data centers private data centers uh, which are custom and bespoke environments that you can connect to or on uh, ridge edge uh, devices which are it could be um, deployed even on a single host and single um, bare metal host machine uh, same functionality, same features and capabilities as you are about to see in the next uh, five or 10 minutes. So let's uh, create a cluster. Uh, this is done by choosing, uh, first of all, the organization that you're uh, associated with uh, and a project. In this example, you could see we are, uh, the test organization is the organization we are now um, members of and sandbox, that's the project. Uh, projects are the way uh, you could segregate different uh, resources and obviously different permissions from different members. Uh, so everything would be done in this context of this project. Uh, so let's look at our clusters. As you could see, there are two running clusters right now in this uh, uh, context. Uh, one of them is on top of one of our partners, Internet in the US. This is in, in uh, uh, San Jose. And the other one is in Israel. This is uh, based out of one of our partners in Israel called Net One. Uh, let's create a new cluster. Uh, which is done in a very simple way uh, by clicking the create cluster button. You could <coughs> give the cluster a name. So let's call it migrate uh, cluster. Um, uh, you can choose an existing network. A network is something similar to a VPC. It's a combination of a VLAN and a gateway. Uh, so you could uh, choose an existing network or create a new one. Existing network, meaning that you could create multiple clusters on the same network. You could also create instances and uh, connect those clusters with each other. Uh, in this case, let's create a new one. Uh, give the new network a name, migrate uh, network. Uh, you could choose the data center where you want these uh, resources to be created. So you could choose uh, or type as you go. So let's do that on one of our partners, Orange in uh, Paris. Uh, we support high available and low available control planes. That means the amount of master nodes. If you do need a single master node just to save some money or for development or QA purposes, you could uncheck this checkbox. You could choose the Kubernetes version. We are CNCF certified. That means that we provide and support uh, upgrades in between versions. Uh, and we roll out uh, versions according to CNCF policy. Uh, and obviously the seamless upgrades in between versions. Um, so I chose here uh, 121. Um, there are some additional settings. We're not going to go over them uh, in this session, but just to so, uh, give you a little bit of uh, context here, you could see that the, unlike a, a lot of providers out there, we allow you to control the sizing of the master nodes. Uh, since I chose uh, this data center, then you could see that uh, the default master node configuration is um, in this use case, it's uh, two cores and four gigs, but if you want di a different uh, or to select a different uh, sizing, you could do that easily by selecting a different size. Uh, we support different CNI plugins. Uh, currently we support Weave and Calico. Uh, the default is, is Weave. Uh, there's API server whitelisting. Uh, by default, it's uh, open to the internet, but you could block it if you choose to. And as you could see, you could choose the cluster subnet uh, here for pods and services, those are the defaults. Uh, there's uh, AWS credentials. I'm not gonna uh, explain that right now, You're, um, but this allows you uh, to uh, connect or to deploy AWS SDK on our uh, cloud and connect seamlessly to any AWS web service. If you want more details, please feel free to uh, browse to our developer portal and uh, check it out. Uh, so those are the additional settings. Uh, you could choose a node pool. So in this case, so let's uh, call uh, 
let's call it pool one. Uh, we support auto scaling natively. This could be done um, during uh, creation or um, dynamically after creation. So you could see, I could choose the, the amount of um, uh, worker nodes here, a minimum and a maximum, and obviously the initial count. If I don't want that, then let's uh, pick up two worker nodes and again, select the configuration here. You get an estimation of pricing and basically that's it. What happens right now under the hood is that we uh, take care of all of the underlying physics. So you as uh, obviously uh, users uh, sit back, relax. It takes uh, about four or five minutes. Uh, we uh, create uh, a fully isolated VLAN. Uh, we create uh, the cluster, meaning uh, machines. We uh, provision them, uh, or install operating system, Kubernetes configuration certificates, load balancing, firewall, all of the things that are needed uh, to uh, provision a cluster. Once the cluster is switched from a creating to a running state, uh, then that means that uh, the cluster is uh, in a healthy state. All of the nodes are in a ready state and you can connect to the cluster and deploy an application. Uh, as you could see, this cluster is currently in a creating state. The network is migrate net here. If you click this, you could see the, that's the network. It's in a running state. As you could see, it has a private IP range here and a NAT IP. That means the uh, IP of the router. All machines that access the internet would access uh, using this IP. And uh, you could see those clusters. If you create uh, multiple clusters or create uh, VMs on the same network, you'll see them in a list here. So let's jump back, back to our cluster. Uh, you could see the partner, uh, it's currently deployed on Orange. That's the data center in Orange, Kubernetes version. Obviously it's a high available cluster, meaning uh, there's three master nodes. And down here, you could see the node pools. Currently we have only one node pool with a couple of nodes and that's the sizing of the nodes uh, they're starting right now. And as mentioned before, you could update the uh, node pool. Uh, so you could uh, turn on the auto scaling or add more um, nodes, um, worker nodes uh, to this node pool, and this will scale your uh, node pool. You could obviously create uh, more node pools during creation or during, uh, and even if the cluster is up and running. So you could get different uh, node pool and select different sizing, for example, and so on. Um, so that's uh, auto provisioning. Um, we uh, monitor the integrity of the cluster 24 7. That means if the cluster is in a uh, uh, is in a, an unhealthy state. That means one of the, of the nodes, master or worker nodes are not ready. Uh, we know how to auto heal the cluster, kill the bad node, create another one instead. So you guys don't need to wake up at 2 a.m. And this is obviously done in a seamless way to, uh, uh, to you as end customers. We take care of all of the underlying physics. So uh, we take care of load balancing, persistent volumes, uh, everything that is needed for you to deploy an application. So the only thing you need to do is uh, deploy, uh, deploy the app. And by deploying the app, uh, that means uh, interact with Kubernetes API and, uh, uh, and that's it. Uh, you don't need to configure or, or do anything manually um, uh, at all. Uh, so that's, uh, uh, that's our, uh, uh, sorry, uh, configuring the underlying uh, infrastructure. Um, what we're about to do is um, after this uh, cluster would switch to a running state, hopefully in a few seconds, we're gonna deploy uh, um, an application. This could be uh, like, you could use any standard Kubernetes tools like uh, kubectl or Helm uh, to do it. Um, and this is done by accessing the access control here. I'll show you that in a second, but, but before that you could see that currently there's no load balancers here because we haven't deployed anything. And there's no persistent volumes because we haven't deployed anything. Another way to deploy an application uh, is using our marketplace here. Uh, maybe we, uh, I'll show you that at the end of this uh, session, but we do have an extensive marketplace where you could install an app and pretty simple by uh, selecting an app here. So we support a bunch of applications. Uh, so you guys don't need to do anything other than choose the application, um, click on it and we take care of the rest. Um, we support uh, VPNs, that means a bi-directional VPN from the cluster to any, uh, any resource outside the cluster, where, whether it is on Ridge or outside Ridge, it's based out of WireGuard. If you want uh, examples of that, you could have a look at our uh, getting started guides and documentation from our website. Uh, and as you could see, our cluster is up and running, which is pretty cool and pretty fast. 
Uh, so let's try to connect to it. This is done by uh, creating uh, a token, an access uh, token in our cluster. And this uh, is actually where we grant, as you could see, members of our organization. In this case, that's me. Uh, we grant uh, permissions uh, to do that. So let's call this my uh, great uh, cluster here, the token. And when once I create it, as you could see, we generate a standard Kubernetes configuration file, which allows me to access this cluster with those uh, permissions. So let me download this to my machine here. Um, after I download this, uh, downloaded this, uh, sorry, uh, to my machine, uh, I am um, uh, gonna jump to our command line tool and, and, uh, and we uh, pause the recording for a second here and we'll jump to our command line tool. Okay, um, that's my uh, command line, and uh, let me uh, export my cube config here with the uh, new configuration file I've just downloaded. And if I do uh, cube cuttle and uh, get uh, nodes, you will be able to see there are three master nodes here and two worker nodes, as expected. All of them are in a running state. Um, and let's deploy an application. So this is done by installing, um, I'm gonna use Helm here, to install, install a simple uh, application or WordPress application, which is from Bitnami a stable repository. And uh, after installing this, you'll see a couple of pods, WordPress and, and MariaDB, that's a database. And obviously we will create a service of a tight load balancer. So we, we could have uh, ingress traffic into our new website uh, and a couple of uh, persistent volumes uh, because we want the database and the configuration for WordPress to be uh, persistent. So. Let's install this. Uh, once we install uh, this uh, configuration, then there you go. Um, and let's do get pods. You could see there's a couple of pods in a creating state and uh, the services here, as you could see, there's a service of a type load balancer here, which requires port 80 and 443 ingress traffic. Let's go back to our website. Uh, sorry, to our application here. And you'll see that it switches into a configuring state and we have started to create a load balancer here. Actually, we are pretty fast on doing that. So you could see there's a load balancer here called uh, out of a service called My WordPress, which has ingress traffic. So we know how to create the load balancer, configure the load balancer for health checks, as you could see here, for ingress traffic, for uh, firewall rules. And we also manage the allocation of public IPs. So as you could see here, we already allocated a public IP for this um, service. Uh, if we jump back to our uh, command line here, you could see that there's uh, two persistent volume claims here. One of them, eight gigabytes, is connected to MariaDB, a database, and one of them, 10 gigabytes, connected to WordPress. Let's jump back to our UI, and you'll see that we have created two uh, dynamically um, volumes that are attached to two different nodes. Uh, since uh, probably Kubernetes has deployed those two pods on two different nodes, and now we have connected those to uh, uh, obviously attach them, format them, mounted them, and uh, they're ready to be used by Kubernetes. Let's go and have a look at our uh, pods uh, status right now. And you see that both of them are uh, running and hopefully they'll switch into a ready state soon. Uh, and let's do that. Uh, by the way, if you look at uh, the state of each pod, you could see both of them were deployed on different uh, nodes. That means that uh, the volumes attached are in a correct manner. If the volumes or the pod or the nodes are uh, uh, destroyed or you know uh, being recycled by Kubernetes, we know how to detach the volume, attach it to the new pod uh, and so on. So everything is seamless to you as and customers. The only thing you care about is the application. As you can see here, they're both switched into a running state. We could go ahead and look at the services here. And you could see that the public IP has been propagated into Kubernetes. You could copy paste this. And if you choose here, yay, we have a website uh, up and running. As you could see that under five minutes, we created a high available control plane and cluster in Paris and one of our partners deployed an application on this, created a load balancer, persistent volumes, everything is done in a very quick and simple manner. Uh, uh, and, and 
uh, for you as end customers, the only thing that you care about is deploying your application. And that concludes the overview of a uh, rich Kubernetes uh, service. Feel free to uh, browse into our developer portal and get more details or uh, contact our support. We'll be happy to accommodate you with a trial account. Thank you for joining.